The ultimate guru is you. So connecting with our higher self through our heart, through gratitude, this is how we can listen and hear the guidance from inside of us. You can think love, you can think gratitude, but how do you feel love and how do you feel gratitude? We take the the software that was this and we just put a new software in and we reboot the person. And things do just start flowing, just flowing. And you don't realize it until it's not there anymore. So the idea is to take us from stage one where we're constantly looking at the world around us as a source of worth. My heart is a key component to connecting to my soul. Next time you face a challenge, take a deep breath in through your nose, through your heart and go. Since I'm worthy of love, what's really going on right now? I would love to start by talking about the amazing method that you shared with me, the heart freedom technique and having gone through it myself now and experienced just how quickly you can go deep and find blocks that I didn't even know were within me. And I do this work on a regular basis. One, how did you create such a technique? And two, how can someone learn more about this technique? Yes. So, um, yeah, the technique goes deep. Like, I, I think it's a problem for me because I get to connect so deeply with people over and over again. So I'm just used to connecting deeply with people. And sometimes people are not ready for that. But um, how I I created the heart freedom method is my background. I was a chiropractor and I, I was interested because I had like, I would have 10 patients with the same low back condition. Eight of them would get better. And those two, no matter what I did, they wouldn't get better. And that was frustrating. So I started researching different methods and I came across one called NET neuroemotional technique. And it's Dr. Scott Walker who created it. And it's amazing. It allowed me to get miracles with my patients. But you can also use NET for um, finding, you know, emotions and the way of your success and all that. So it was great, except you need to be a chiropractor or someone with a medical license to, to use it. And I wanted to be able to coach my clients around the world because... I remember how it started. I had a, a, a client, a chiropractor in Madrid, and I'm working with him. And I'm going, ah, I need to do NET with him, but I can't over the phone because with NET, you need to do muscle testing. You need to be face to face. So I was frustrated. And necessity is the mother of all invention. <laughs> yes. So I started searching because I read somewhere that someone with sciatica, if you can actually become present with the sensation of sciatica and give it a color and things like that, you can actually take the pain out of it just by becoming present. I thought, ha, huh, maybe I could translate this into the body. So, you know, the power of necessity sometimes. And at the same time as I was studying with Dr. Walker, I discovered Dr. Demartini and the power of gratitude. And so when I was working with people with NET, I thought something is missing. Like we would find the event, but we took it out of the physiology, but I wanted to go deeper than that. I wanted to really transform the person so that they would experience this, this gratitude, because as soon as you experience gratitude, you increase your self-worth. And so I just love, like when I started to do this with my clients and find the moment, and then I was reading Lynn McTaggart. She has a book called the, um, the intention experiment this, she has a book called the, the field. She has a few like this and reading this, I thought, oh, cool. When I find the moment when a belief was stored, it's great. I dissolve it from the physiology, 
but now I need to put a new program. So that's why I program the person in the future as though they have already succeeded. And from the future, then I can bring them here now in the present. So it totally transformed the time and space continuum. Like we, we change the whole programming and we install, it's like putting a new program in, you know, we take the, the software that was this and we just put a new software in and we, we reboot the person. And what I love is that I know every time someone does it well, you have more love for yourself, more gratitude for your life, and it increases your self-worth. And I love, love, love doing it because it works, but also because I, I believe that at the collective unconscious, if each and every one of us start to heal our hearts, we would stop the inner wars that we have. Yes, yes. And then the collective unconscious, you put peace in, you know, in the collective unconscious. If, like, so my dream, you know, my dream is to have at least one person for a family that knows how to do the heart freedom method. So that, we, you know, parents can do it with their kids because I've had little kids come to see me and I, I, I teach my, my, my parents, it's like, you can make your kids have such an amazing life when you help them to realize that nothing that's happening to them is because something is wrong with them. And it's just there to guide them to become stronger and unfold their highest potential. So if parents could do it with their children, but also couples, like I have, I train coaches in my method and I have a couple there together and they say, I don't understand how people can be in relationship without knowing this, because I would say 95% of the time, if you have, you know, a fight in your relationship, it's not about what's happening. It's about some story from the past that's popping up right now. And it's making you react instead of being response to what's happening. So by doing the heart freedom method, we, we take away the conditioned response that gets us to react. Like even sometimes people come to see me around Christmas time and they know they're going to go, you know, with the family and they promise themselves, I am not going to react when my mom says that. But it's a knee jerk. It's a conditioned response. So they still respond until you do the heart freedom method on it. And now the, the button is not there anymore. It cannot be activated. And now you can be present and actually hear what's going on. Yeah. And it is an amazing technique in that it doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter what culture, what demographic it is a technique that can really dive in and assist you in understanding what is triggering you so that you can take action. I know for me, when we went in and we found something that was in there, Worried. I was able to see what created an entire snowball for me but then also see the beauty of what resulted from that. Like maybe what occurred wasn't an amazing occurrence, but everything that came out of it drove me to become the person that I am today. And so the gratitude yeah. that you're talking about, I could embrace that gratitude for what occurred because it led me to be the person that I am. And then I can see how it'll drive me in the future as well. So you look at it through a different lens and instead of feeling like a victim and then being triggered by it every time, even now when it would come up and I'm like, oh, wow, I got to look at it from a different perspective. And if you can mm -hmm. start that in childhood, if you can help your children oh, understand, then yes, we help our collective consciousness internally with knowing how to address and have responses versus reactions, but we're also creating a better world. And you have a book that talks about this technique, correct? Yes. Well, um, I, I wrote the book and it's going to come out soon um, with Jack and Fila is Jack has been using my method with big groups. And he asked me to write a book about my method so right now the book is called Unstuck. We still have to have the subtitle and it hopefully it's going to come out soon uh, this year. And um, 
yeah, so I'm really excited because I want to have it in different languages. Like right now I have coaches who speak English, French, Spanish, and even I have a psychiatrist who's Russian who's getting trained in my method. So I can see this work expanding in different languages where everybody can learn to do it. And, and we can nip it in the bud, like right in the beginning. And we can create a whole different kind of consciousness through doing this. And yeah, and, and I, I talk about there are two stages to human development, the unconscious, the sleep and fantile stage, and everybody goes through that. And then there's the conscious, awakened, mature stage. If you're lucky, you transport yourself into stage two. But I call stage one the boot camp. Everybody needs to get to the boot camp because my belief is that our divine nature is inside of us is love. So we all have access to love. It's who we are, it's our essence. But we have to forget it. We have to forget our divine essence because when you're in your heart and you're really connected in a state of grace, of gratitude, nothing is missing. You have no desire. You know the Buddhist principle of having no desire? Yeah. <laughs> well, could you imagine if billions of people under the Buddha tree having no desire, just humming, like nothing would happen. Yeah. So we have to forget our divine nature, come into a physical form, and then we get tricked. Because right from the beginning, love has to come from the outside. If love doesn't come from the outside, you're going to die. So we get used to looking for a reflection of our worth in the way the world reacts to us. Well, you're worthy of love whether or not the world has time for you at that moment. It's not because something is wrong with you. So, but while we are unconscious, all these challenges, they become fuel to us. And I have an analogy. In the olden days, you would have these gigantic rocket that would you know have a capsule at the top so you would have two fuel stages the first fuel stage would disconnect the second foot fuel stage would disconnect and then the capsule could go into orbit so stage one every time we have a challenge it drives us because we're not comfortable there. So now we run away from pain towards pleasure and it becomes our fuel and it works. It will take you up. But what would happen if the fuel stage did not disconnect from the capsule? The whole thing comes back crashing down on planet Earth. So the fuel is fear that we are unworthy of love. That's what drives us. That's why we keep going, trying to compensate for how inadequate we are, which is an illusion. It's not true. So the idea is to take us from stage one, where we're constantly looking at the world around us as a source of worth, to then bring it into stage two, where our heart, our own self, is our source of worth. And that's why I always use my yin and yang. So the, male princi the female principle is the yin, which is listening. And the male principle is the yang, which is acting. And our heart wants us to know two things. The first thing our heart wants us to know is that we're worthy of love. And we need to do whatever it takes to let go of the opposite story. So that's why doing the heart freedom method is important, because it lets go of that story. Then you need to admit your dreams and aspirations from your heart. Not your head, not your emotion, not from a magazine, not from some guru you listen to, because the ultimate guru is you. If you spell guru, G-U-R-U, -U, guru. So connecting with our higher self through our heart, through gratitude, this is where how we can listen and hear the guidance from inside of us. Like gratitude is super important. When people tell me I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do here on planet Earth, usually it's because... They, haven't, they don't have access to the heart. And one of the easiest way to access the heart is through gratitude and love. Once you have gratitude and love, you get inspiration. If you look at inspiration, in means with. Asian is a condition of spirit. So to get inspiration, you need to be connected from the heart. 
So the more you do this work, the easier it becomes to hear what the heart is guiding you to do. So you listen to your heart and then you start organizing your time to give your heart what it wants. And that's stage two. So it's a different fuel. You're not running away from pain towards pleasure because you're inadequate and worthy of love. In stage two, you're coming from inspiration because what you want to do is bring the best out of yourself. Benefiting from stage one, from the boot camp. And when, when you start living life like this, it, it, to me, it's so clear now. And because I've done this with so many people that what we all need to do is first spend time listening to our heart and deciding what's my purpose in life? Why am I here? Like, how am I going to bring the best out of myself? Yes. So once you become clear on that and you want to make it up, so let's say this is a mountain and this is your goal at the top right there. So you know that your goal is to bring the best out of yourself. So when you take your last breath, you look back and you go, yeah, I did a good job. But on your way to fulfilling your purpose, you experience support and challenges and you need to learn to use them to your advantage. It's dangerous to have things that are too pleasurable because, ah, oh, it's so comfy. I want to stay there. I don't really want to go and do these things that are not pleasant. So we need to be aware, okay, this is nice, but it's going to hold me back if I stay there. And then when we face challenges, it's important not to get depressed because no challenge happens to us because something is wrong with us. It's always guiding us. It's always helping us. So if we are a smart human being, we, we don't strive to only have pleasant experience in our life. We learn to use both sides to our advantage. I, can't, I don't know who said that to me, but I remember that the source of human suffering is the search for pleasure without challenges. The source of human suffering is the search for pleasure without challenges because it doesn't exist. That's why the ancient with the yin and the yang, they were smart. They knew, they knew that it doesn't exist and that if we're wise, we use both sides with gratitude to move forward. Yes. And gratitude being such a key, because I know individuals come to us regularly talking about that heart centered experience. And when you're programmed so much to be in your head and to think constantly, it's really challenging to just start to feel love. You can think love, you can think gratitude, but how do you feel love? And how do you feel gratitude? How do you make that shift? And there are tools and techniques that you can utilize, and that's much of what you're discussing, to move from that thought-oriented, okay, I'm thinking, I need to think love, and I need to think about being grateful, to actually holding that and moving it into a heart-centered place and feeling the gratitude for what you're thinking you're grateful for. Do you have any tips or techniques for individuals to move from that state of being? Yeah, what you're saying is so important because as human beings, we can live through three main modes, our mind, our gut, which is our emotions, our heart. And a brilliant mind is revered. So often if we've been challenged in life and we learn to be tough, we move into our head so that we don't have to feel our emotions. Actually, people are very cerebral in my experience. They're actually very emotional and they couldn't deal with the emotions. So they move in there because they felt a lot safer. And that's the challenge of people who are very cerebral. You need to be careful not to stay there. Because like I have one of my friends, he is Mensa, you know, part of that club, the super smart people. And I said to him, I said, one day you're going to have something that's going to happen that your mind will not be able to cope with. And when people are very cerebral, end up in a situation that's so intense for them that their mind cannot cope with it, they crash in their emotions where they can't withstand it anymore. And before he met me, he was depressed for eight years. He couldn't move. So when you want to 
access. People who are emotional when they come to see me, they have a lot easier time because I teach them wise principle that engage the mind so that with the wise principle, they can bring gratitude into the events that they thought were only painful. When people are super cerebral, they have to leave the so-called safety of their mind to allow themselves to feel so then they can get into their hearts. And I'm making a broad stroke comment here, but on average, women have an easier time to feel their emotions and men are often more into their minds. And so women come to see me, they don't have a problem doing the heart freedom method. It's easy. They love it. it they take it like this. Men come to see me and they're in their mind. And then I work with them and they're sweating, poor sweeties, in the beginning often. Because <laughs> yeah. they really have to trust me usually. And they trust me because somebody else they know did it with me and they see the results and now they come to see me. But I had one client come to see me, you know, he, he came by himself. <laughs> but he's sitting in front of me and he's sweating. And it's like, okay, he's, he's being really brave and he's doing this. But once a man has done once and they realize, okay, I allow myself to feel it. But then through gratitude, I get into my heart. They go, oh, now I understand how to do this. And now they're really powerful and driven because they realize every time I do this, I empower myself and they, they make things happen. So on average, women have easy time feeling and, you know, transcending the emotion and men have a harder time. But often the women will be less you know, driven to make things happen after the man, even though he has a hard time feeling once he understands the game, he's like, whoa, I'm ready to rock and roll and they take off. <laughs> That's, yeah. So if they have a challenging time, like say there is a gentleman who shows up and is like, I really cannot get into my heart. I've spent an entire lifetime because maybe uh, it's a, parental situation and the parents really prided the child or the son on being cerebral Smart. and bringing that home, the good grades or the accolades for college scholarships, what have you, what would be one piece of advice that you would give to that individual if they don't know how to even begin in gratitude? Well, <laughs> that's when you need a coach like me because it's really hard otherwise. And what I do when I have people like this that have a really hard time accessing the, the feeling part of themselves is I do my work using muscle testing. And then I find the moment when this need to protect themselves was created and then I can open them up and then we can start working together because usually there's a very powerful moment like this weekend I was with, you know, I, I was in this uh, mastermind with super accomplished people and there's a man there and you just signed up with me as a coach for coaching. And the whole time I was like, okay, let me, let me, because I knew he was cerebral. And I said, let me, let me work with you. And he always like, he was always slipping. And he's like, and then we have 10 minutes at the airport. Doesn't matter <laughs> where you are, them. right? Doesn't matter. <laughs> We're at the airport. We have 10 minutes before boarding. So I got him. And I said, okay, I'm going to test you. And I'm ready, willing, and able to receive help. And he was not able to receive help because when he was a little kid, if he asked for help, his parents would call him stupid. Yes. So I had to heal his heart on that one. And I could tell, you know, he really, like, I could see it in his face that, all right. So he makes the joke. He goes, so I guess I should have done the work with you this week as so, I yes you should have that's for sure so there are tricks for the people who are really challenging but most people like when I do when I do a full coaching um, package with my clients that's why it's super important for me that they 
do the my extreme freedom weekend because on the Saturday we spend a whole six hours learning a tool called the De Martini method. That then when I put them through the De Martini method, you spend five, six hours starting with you know emotions you felt things that were painful in your life and then after five six hours of looking at gratitude how you can have the heart starts to open and that it's rare that i don't get someone to open their heart if when they do the the De martini method with me on the saturday afternoon and that's you know that really helps to understand because it doesn't, it's not a head concept after a while. It becomes a heartfelt experience. Yeah. Yeah. I have tricks and it's, you know, it, those people, but I would say that might be 10% of the population. Most people I find somehow I can get them in their heart and the people, the, the hardest people is the people who don't want to go there because they're so scared. And I guess you can. I created um, a tool called the best friend journal. And so you get to spend, it's a 30 day challenge where you learn how to connect with your own voice so you can make yourself feel safer because it's always about fear. The reason people have a hard time feeling their heart is because they're afraid. They're so afraid. So it's an emotion actually. And the biggest emotion that's going to cut you off is that you cannot trust yourself to be there for you. So that's why I created the best friend journal, because you do this and slowly, but surely you realize that it's up to you to be there for you, to be in your heart, to, to cheerlead you on. Like one of my clients, she's a provincial level uh, cyclist. And she was telling me how at the end of a race, often her coach couldn't be there. And if she was not where she wanted to be, she would start beating herself down and, you know, the ranking would go down. And now after doing the heart, the best friend journal and the heart freedom method, but doing the best friend journal, she says at the end of a race, when usually she would start beating herself down, she would start coaching herself because once you can rely on you to be there for you. Like you don't need the outside world. Like this is the only way we're going to be safe because let's face it. When we graduate from the physical world, even if you have your whole family around you, you need to be there for you. You need to be able to connect you and guide you and, and soothe yourself and nurture you so you can make a conscious, you know, graduation from planet earth. So, it's, it's a powerful thing to do, to learn, to connect with the self, to connect with the heart, to, to be there for ourselves. Cause that way you don't have to be afraid. You can put yourself in all kinds of situation. And, and if you know, you can trust you to be there for you, you'll be safe. Hi, I'm Amber. Thank you so much for watching. If you could do me just a quick favor and click like and subscribe wherever you are, it helps us more than we can possibly say. And you had mentioned one of the things that I personally have found very valuable, especially when I was going from being cerebral to understanding that, you know, my heart is a key component to connecting to my soul but my body stores memories and emotions and energy. And I need to keep an inventory on what's being stored there in order to connect to my heart and get to my soul. And that's the muscle testing. So for anyone who may be listening to or watching this and has never heard of muscle testing, can you just touch on that and how you use it? Yes. Um, as a chiropractor, you often get trained to use a method called applied kinesiology. And so what you do is you leave, you use the deltoid. Usually you can use a finger, but that's like what you do is, and I don't like when people use it as like a magic trick because you really need to be present with the person and face the person and use the muscle. And you can have a lie detector test. So you could hold, you know, the handles and have a lie detector test and needle moving. So by doing muscle testing, the only thing we're doing is we're, 
accessing the nervous system right away. And so when you, if you are making a statement like, my name is Amber, you're Amber, like your nervous system says, yeah, that's the truth. Then if you say, my name is Liz, then your arm's going to go down because you're not Liz. Or my hair is brown, you would, you would be strong. If my hair is white, it would be weak. So the idea is not to say statements you know are not true, but statements you would like to be true. And when I work with people who come to see me as clients, the first thing that I start always is I love myself. I'm worthy of love. Love is safe. I'm really willing and able to be loved. I'm really willing and able to love. I make it all around that because remember when I was talking about stage one is every time we look at the outside world, when it's not reacting to us in a way we, we think it should react, then we think something is wrong with us. So it's, it's impossible. I like, I have not met anybody so far who, when I tested them on, I love myself was strong. That's never happened. Doesn't mean it can't happen, but my population sample <laughs> so far, like a hundred percent. And the reason is, is that since the beginning, we're looking at the outside to take care of us, which makes us at the mercy of the winds and creating stories. The good news is if we created the story, hopefully we want to undo the story because is a baby worthy of love is a toddler in the throes of the terrible twos worthy of love is a teenager worthy of love as a 20 30 at what point did you stop being worthy of love yes you only stopped being worthy of love when you decided to so the truth is you are worthy of love you are love and once you start from this premise, you don't have to be afraid of looking inside. You should actually be really curious, going, oh my goodness, look at the story I created. It's not true. It's the opposite. And why is it that we end up with people who want to kill other people and go to war and do all these awful things to others? Anybody who's connected in their heart is not going to do that. So it's people who've been really hurt really disconnected from their heart that end up doing those things. So I know there are also people who are sick. So if you're a psychopath, like you have a pathologist, like if you're blind, are you ever going to be able to see? Maybe with new technology, they can make us see. But like some people are blind to the connection of their heart. Like they came, for me, my my theory, who knows, but that's my theory, is they're their young soul. They haven't been around often enough to be able to build their muscles to withstand challenges so young soul come along and they have a challenge and they can't handle it and they just break apart and mm, so unfortunately those people cannot be helped but i believe that you know if we went to prison and we found a whole bunch of people in there there's a whole bunch of them we could really help and they would become good people in society if they wanted to heal their hearts because a happy person is never going to want to hurt another person it's only the unhappy person that's going to want to hurt others. Yeah. The saying, hurt people, hurt people. Right. Mm, exactly. Yeah. So that's why I'm inspired about doing this work. Because I know, like, sometimes I have parents who bring me their little kids. And the little kid has been bullied. And they come to see me because they want to help the little kid. And then we do the work. And then I say to them, who do you think is going to kick a dog? A happy person or an unhappy person? And their eyes go, wow, yeah. an unhappy person. Yeah. yeah. So what does that mean about this person who does that to you? Oh. And I, like you can see the wheels of the little kid going around and around and they go, yeah. So what it does is that it helps them understand it's not because something is wrong with them that this bully did something. It's because that person is hurt. And that really helps the little kid gain confidence. And they, 
not telling them to go hang around with them, but the day they have empathy and they understand them, usually, you know, the bullying goes away. Yeah. It's, it's fascinating. I love it. And for those who are listening or watching, I am with noted author, Dr. Leesh Janelle, and she is sharing a lot of her tricks with us. If someone wanted to get a hold of you to understand how to become a coach or how mm. to get in touch with one of your coaches or get coaching with you, how would they go about doing that? Um, you can just send an email to info at drlegionelle.com and somebody will um, respond to you. And if you want, and I would love to have people who are listening to this right now, if you would be interested, because my goal is to help a million people and I can't keep doing it by myself. So I want to train people in the method and the benefit of doing the training is first, so you can be a good person to do it, you need to do your inner work. So you transform your own life. You become very masterful at using the method and then you can use it to help other people afterwards. So it's heartfreedomcoach.com. If you go there, you will, you'll see all the information on how to become a coach on my website, heartfreedommethod.com, drlegionelle.com. If you go there, you'll find all the information. And also for regular people, if you're not interested in doing the certification, which is a six months program, um, I have Get Unstuck, Unleash Your Dream Life. And it's an online program where you learn how to do the method each area of life. And you get two group coaching call a month and you can ask me questions and you get to practice. And it's that's my dream is to grow this community so we can have lots of fun. And one day what I want to do also is I want to do like one day and two day retreats where everybody works with everybody and we all practice, you know, getting unstuck on different things that are blocking us because I do it with my coaches. We have a heal the healer weekend. And after the two days on Sunday night, like people are walking on air. It's like, it's so inspiring. It's, it's so beautiful. And you see when you work with somebody else and you do the heart for them method, like it opens up the heart to each other. It's a beautiful moment. And it, it brings, you know, compassion and empathy and no judgment because it, it's just so beautiful. Yeah. Well, and I had 30 minutes of the heart freedom method and I was walking on air. So I can't imagine what multiple hours of it could potentially do for an individual and anyone That's listening terrible. to the heart leader podcast our mission is the same as yours to align and create a ripple effect of love and heart-centered connection so to have a method that we can utilize if we're searching for such a thing you're providing a context for individuals to say, okay, this resonates with me. So I am so grateful to be able to bring this forward for individuals. We'll make certain that there are links everywhere that one would be listening to or watching this so that they can find their way to get to everything that you just mentioned. So they don't have to just jot it down like people are driving or might be doing other things so they can always come back and find you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yes. But that does lead me to ask, what got you into this? I know you mentioned you were a chiropractor and that individuals were having difficulty in the same areas, but that's about the individual. Now, there's something within you and I can feel it. There is a passion that's within you that brought you to this work. Are you willing to share that yes, with us? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, for sure. Yeah, you can tell it's not fake. Um, in 1988, my father was diagnosed with terminal cancer and he was given nine months to live. That was three weeks before my sister's wedding. A week after my sister's wedding, my 21-year-old brother died in a car accident. And then within a month of this, my eight-year relationship to the man I thought I was going to marry ended. And it was like, ow. Oh, Ow, ow, ow. So to survive the pain, 
like again, like you, you mentioned in the beginning, I would not have chosen consciously. I would not have chosen to have this challenge for sure. It was so painful, but I'm now grateful for it because in order to survive the pain, I went on a quest to understand what it takes to live a great life. Because it's not if these things are going to happen in our life. It's when they happen, how do we learn to use them? And so that's what I was mentioning to you. I met Dr. Demartini, Dr. John Demartini. And I did the Demartini method on my father up until that day when I'm like, I love my dad, but I was also very angry with him. And it was, so when you do the Demartini method, what you do is you start to see the big picture of why it had to be this way. And I started to understand my dad, not only as my dad, but as a human being. And then I saw a man who reminded me of my dad and I saw him crying and he said, mommy, why is it you didn't love me? And my heart just exploded because now I understood, I understood my father at a spiritual level. And I ended up in this state of like people who have near death experience, they describe it the same way. So I was in this state of grace. So I know from my own experience that if you have an extreme case of gratitude, you actually end up in a state of grace and a state of grace. It's like heaven on earth. So I was shown without words that everything that ever happened, everything that is happening, everything that will ever happen to us is there for us to grow in love and wisdom. So I was shown this at a deep level without words, but I really got it. It was a powerful spiritual experience in my life. And I stayed there maybe for 30 seconds. I'm crying. My heart is open. It's, oh my goodness, it's full of light. And then I came back down. And I thought, wow, I want to give this to as many people as I can. So that has been my driver. Like I would not, that was in 1989. I wrote down a statement, a purpose for my life. And my career statement said that I was going to help to maximize the life potential of millions of people through reconnecting them with their heart. That's why, that's why I've had the discipline and the focus of doing this and searching like a mad scientist, how I could organize this and make this happen the best that I could, because that experience was so beautiful and powerful. Like thinking about it brings tears to my eyes because ah, it's such a state of bliss. So yeah, that's what's been driving me. And the more I live by these principles I've been speaking about, you know, at first, when I first started, I could have gratitude, you know, once every two days, then you have gratitude once a day, then you have gratitude once every six hours, and then you can have gratitude and things that would take you a month before to get over, then they can take a, a week to get over. And the more you live, it can take a day. Sometimes it takes an hour. It takes, sometimes it takes a minutes. So the more you practice it, the more you live it. And that's, that's what I'm driven by because living in that place where I experienced that magical moment, I believe we all have access to it. And we have access to it every time we have gratitude. And that's what's been driving me. What a beautiful, powerful story. Thank you for sharing. You. And just contained within that, it shows individuals like, it's not, uh, okay, I'm going to do this once and suddenly I'm there. It is yeah, no. a gradual scale Jill. and a journey where we can track it. Like if we are cerebral individuals, there is a way to track our progress, but the experience comes from our heart. The experience you had was a heartfelt, heart-centered surrender by using a method that fit for you and allowing that method to work. And then you tracked your progress, like it goes from once a week, maybe to once every few days, but you can see that journey and you can see how it is actually occurring in your life. And that is a beautiful feeling as well, because then you can also see when you're starting to trend backwards. 
which unfortunately exactly. can happen too, right? Life happens. Yeah. <laughs> you, you watch yourself and you go, oh, look at me. I'm back in stage one right now. I don't like being there. I'm going to go back in stage two. And that's what happens. Yeah. You become conscious. You go, huh, look at me. Stage one. Okay. Bringing myself to stage two again. And that's exactly it. And to not be upset with yourself when that happens, but to understand it's part of the human journey. And that's why I love your yin yang, right? There's nothing wrong with being on either side of it. It's just where are we and being conscious enough to understand that and then knowing steps you can take to move from one to the other very fluidly. So mm -hmm. exactly. thank you for bringing options forward for individuals to get to where they desire to go because what we hear so often is I have the desire I just don't even know where to start exactly right it starts with there are two like as human being you have your conscious mind that can connect with your heart that can be driven to make things happen with your life but then you have this whole story this subconscious part of you you're not even aware of like it runs you like, do, do I have a couple of minutes to share oh, one yes. of my stories? Yes, please. I, I shared it with you. So like, I've been doing this work since 1989, you know, and I've been every day of my life, I've been focused on wanting to bring this work in the world. You, you heard my story. And so in October of last year, I decided to commit from being in my little office to bring it into the world because the book is going to come out and I need to learn different things and all that. And so I hired a coach and it's Christmas time and I'm, I'm organizing things. I have a wonderful Christmas time. And then it's January 3rd and I get sick and I got so sick. Ah, oh, so, so sick. Like in, in one week I lost like, four kilograms, almost 10 pounds, like, of, and they, I would wake up in the morning, I would dream of going back to sleep. I was so weak and exhausted. And like three weeks later, I was still not my usual full of energy stuff. And I'm going, what's going on? And I was in my hot tub and I, my hot tub is a good place for me to visualize and meditate and be one with the universe. So I said, okay, Lise, it's not a coincidence that this happened when you were ready to rock and roll. So I went back to a moment when I was like five years old and I was trying to be such a good little girl for my mom and a big, good, big sister. But no matter what, my mom, I couldn't make my mom happy and she was not seeing my efforts. So I had this sense of, hopelessness and helplessness about what I was going to be able to do in the world. Like I could do things, but I was never going to be able to have that thing, which is to make my mom happy. Yeah. So bring me back now. Hey, what do I want to do is I want to make the world happy. <laughs> which is not a small task. <laughs> which is not a small task. But so the Pavlovian bell was ringing and it was this belief was working against me. So I'm so driven. I kept pushing forward to making it happen. But when you push against inner resistance from your subconscious mind, it just drains your energy. It drains you and it drains you. And that's something super important also to remember. You won't create what you want in life. You're going to create what you believe. You won't create what you want in life. You're going to create what you believe. So if you believe it's hopeless and helpless, no matter how hard you work, you're not going to get it. So I'm driven. I'm making all this happen, but I could feel it. And it was making things nebulous. I was not able to make the right decision. So anyway, I did the heart freedom method on myself. And I was like, ah, oh, goodness, the relief, because I felt this. You know, it's like when you have the subconscious work, working against you, it's like this noise inside of you. It's like, ah, now it's like my soul, my mind, my heart, and my emotion. It's all in line. And I can know that I know that I know what to do now. It's not so hard anymore. We, I, I didn't, we didn't mention this, but there are three clues that you have a subconscious belief working against you. Number one, you know what needs to be done, but you're not doing it. The famous procrastination. 
the good news, it's not because you lack willpower. It's not because you're lazy. It's because for you, it's too dangerous to go after what you want. The second one is you do what needs to be done, but it uses, it uses a lot more energy, which was that story I just shared with you. And number three is you keep doing everything right, but you get the opposite results to what you want. And that one drives ambitious people crazy because you're so dedicated. You read all the books, you do all these things, but I can guarantee you, you can take 10,000 courses in practice management in career in finances in love and anything you can do all. And if subconsciously it's not good for you to get that, you're going to have a really hard time because your conscious mind, relatively speaking, is the size of a football. And your subconscious mind that's there to keep you alive, the football field. Yeah. So imagine the difference. Who do you think is going to win? Yes. And I can tell you, like for me, I, I likened it to having a clog to drain. And the moment we moved that clog, it was like whoosh, and everything just seemed to start moving. And it was an amazing feeling just energetically. For me, the feeling of the energy movement through my form is pivotal. And you get used to it. It's like a pain that you just kind of get used to living with. But the moment it's not there and you just feel it start to move, you're just, it's like, yeah. wow. And yeah. things do just start flowing just flowing and you don't realize it until it's not there anymore. So that's why for, for me, and I know for the Suivera team, we are so excited to continue conversations with you long past what we're doing here and make certain our community has access to what you're doing and is kept apprised of when you have retreats, when you have different things going on, because it will assist in getting that heart-centered community. You know, our whole point is love is a common language that will unite us all. And coming from that heart-centered space, it doesn't mean we're not thought leaders. It just means we're heart leaders first. And this exactly. method will help in supporting that type of a movement. So I really can't thank you enough for being willing to to come on to this podcast and share what you've brought forward and let's see how we continue to flow together. Well, I can't tell you how thankful I have for you also, because like you're part of my tribe, you're the people that, you know, we resonate together and it's magical, but we found each other. <laughs> I agree. Very, very magical. And again, we will make certain everyone has access over and over. And if you're open to it, we'll include you in newsletters and just make sure individuals have lots of ways to get access. But as we're wrapping up, anything else that you feel would just be wonderful for people to know, whether it's how to, in case they are at a place now where they can write and they don't want to click, maybe your website or just anything that you would want to share. Um, yes, go to heartfreedommethod.com and you can, if you go there, I have some gifts, things that you can download that you can benefit from listening to and using There's The best friend journal is there. There's all kinds of, there's a masterclass. There's all kinds of things that you can listen to. So that will be an easy one. You can also go to the one just with my name, drlegionelle.com, which is my older one. It has all kinds of stuff, but the Heart Freedom Method one has access to all the goodies that you can have. And one thing I want to leave people with is next time you face a challenge, take a deep breath in through your nose, through your heart and go, since I'm worthy of love, what's really going on right now? How am I going to use what's happening to my advantage so that instead of hurting yourself, you will grow from it and have more gratitude for who you are, what you do and what you have. I love that. What a perfect way to wrap up. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.